Hi, and thanks for coming by. Today, we're going to be adding un universally unique identifiers into our application. That's UUIDs. We're going to be adding those into the application. So stick around, and we're going to get right on that. All right, thanks for sticking around. So, um, so as I said, today we're gonna be adding UUIDs into our application uh, that we've been working on over the previous videos. Please go back and check out some of those previous videos and see how we've been building the application uh, from building uh, using Docker containers, incorporating PHP Storm into our application, uh, for our development environment, and also uh, about just building the application a piece at a time. We're doing that a little bit more and more as we go along. So today, I'm going to add in unique identifiers. And uh, so you might ask, why would I want to include unique, uh, universally unique identifiers? Uh, and many people, they develop their applications, they create it, they add an auto increment integer in, uh, as an identifier for their application or for their records in their application. And that's okay, but the thing is, is when you're using those over an API or when you're using them in a web browser, a lot of people uh, are able to look at it and they see number one, number two, number three, number four is sequential. Uh, so that enables somebody to try to be smart and say, you know what, well, what happens if I uh, include a different number? Uh, can I see somebody else's record or can I see my own record for that matter? Um, so it can be a security risk to, to have those numbers being sequential that way, uh, especially in an API, uh, it could be. Now, of course, in an application, you do want to make sure that your application is secure enough so that way you are verifying that somebody couldn't see records for a different user or a different customer in a multi-tenant sort of situation. Uh, but that being said, uh, it is, it's better practice to, or not better, you want to still do those things. You still want to have that level of security, but it's, it's better to also have a, uh, a unique identifier that is un hopefully universally unique, right? It's not just audit, an auto increment number. It is kind of broken up a little bit differently. Uh, now in PHP, uh, ben Ramsey has created a library called Ramsey uh, slash UUID. And Ramsey UUID enables you then to be able to create these unique identifiers for your records in PHP. Uh, now in, uh, in this application, we're using Doctrine as our ORM uh, for our database connectivity and for taking care of all of our database needs. Now, Ben also created another library that is UUID hyphen doctrine. So we have Ramsey slash UUID hyphen doctrine, and that enables us to easily integrate this into our doctrine workflow. So that's what I'm going to be doing today is pulling in uh, the, the package from Ben Ramsey for in incorporating universally unique identifiers into doctrine. <coughs> So to start off with, I'm going to, we're going to fall back and, uh, of course, inc include this in our uh, composer.json. Now, I'm going to do this via the command line. And so I'm going to then type in composer require, because we want to require this package. And I'm going to include Ramsey slash UUID hyphen doctrine. Now, uh, by doing this, I'm also pulling in any dependencies that this package has. And obviously this package will also include Ramsey slash UUID. Uh, so let me go ahead and hit enter on that. So now Composer will do its thing. It'll go out to Packagist and see if it can satisfy these requirements. Uh, and then also go ahead and do the installation, which means copy it down locally add it into the auto loading and get it up and running. We see that it is telling us that it's using version uh, larger than 1.5 of Ramsey UUID doctrine because that's what it found. I didn't specify the version number in my command to require it, so it just went out and pulled what it was able to in order to, to take care of that. Uh, now we see that it did in install three packages actually. It installed Ramsey UUID, 
version 3.8.0. It also included Ramsey UUID doctrine of version 1.5.0, and it brought in another one, which is uh, uh, Paragoni slash random underscore compat. Um, and and uh, so it needed that as a dependency too. We can also see that there are some other recommendations if you needed to uh, include some uh, some other things because Ramsey UUID, it is very flexible. It allows you to specify what type of UUID you want, um, the level of of uh, of uh, uh, the level of complexity that you want to include in it, as well as being able to, uh, you know, set different parameters like how big of a UUID do I want, things like that. So we're not going to worry about that in this video. I'm just going to use it out of the box. Um, so, so now that we've got that included in uh, and we're able to use it, one of the things we want to make sure is that our database is able to handle the UUIDs. So our database, if you may recall in previous videos, um, I'm going to be working in the announcements table. Um, we just used the auto increment uh, of one, two, three, four, five. We were just using that as integers. Uh, so in our database, we can see if I expand out this the DB panel in PHP Storm, I can see that it is in fact an integer 11 and it's set for auto increment. Now I need to change that because Ramsey UUID is not an integer. It is, it is a string, so it's a bunch of characters. Um, now, by default, it is uh, 36 characters. So we need to then uh, change this, uh, the ID field in our, in our tables to be able to accommodate a character 36 field. So I'm going to go ahead and modify the column. Now, I could easily do this via command line by, by issuing uh, uh, SQL statements. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and use the, the built-in functionality in PHP Storm. So we're going we're gonna to change this to be a character 36 field to accommodate. I'm going to uncheck the auto increment because, of course, it's a character field. We don't want to auto increment a character field. We do want it to be not null and we do want it to be a primary key. Now I'm going to click the button down here in the bottom of this, uh, this pop-up window to execute the statement and it, it does add that. And we can see in our database panel here on the right hand side, it did change it to be a character 36 field for the ID column. Now uh, in just a moment ago, I did double click on the database table and it actually gave us a bunch of records and we can see records one through 11. Now, if I refresh this, we'll notice that it does something a little bit different and that is it changes, it alters the sorting of the fields. It's sorting on the ID column, but the ID column is no longer an integer. It is a character field. So now we see uh, records 10 and 11 now kind of bump up because they start with one and it's a character field. So it's starting to show those ahead of, uh, you know, field number two, for instance, ID number two. So we can see that it did in fact uh, take that change. So, uh, so our, our database has now been updated to accommodate that. Now, one of the things that we need to also do since we're using doctrine is we need to change the configuration of doctrine because we need to tell doctrine about this new type called UUID. Doctrine has no idea what UUID is. So we have to tell doctrine uh, what a UUID is. So let's go ahead and open up our configuration, open up our doctrine configuration. And in the doctrine configuration, I need to add in uh, an extra, extra, uh, uh, in my array, I have to add in a new field in the array uh, so it knows how to how to take care of this new type. So I'm going to add it in just like this. I'm adding in the, 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 the array item types. I'm telling it UUID. I'm telling it UUID type. Uh, and I'm calling the class. Now you notice PHP Storm is, is kind of giving me an error because it doesn't know what those are. I do still need to include... Uh, or import rather uh, that the package. So I have to include the package for uh, Ramsey UUID doctrine UUID type. And now you can see it does know what that type is. All right, so doctrine now knows what a UUID is, but it's actually not using it. So we have to, I'm gonna go ahead and close that because we're done with the, we're done with the configuration. Now what I need to do is I need to edit my entity. So um, uh, in the entity, I now have to use 
that library as well. So I'm going to open up my announcements entity or announcement entity entity. Um, one of the things I need to do is I need to import that UUID here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add that, um, add that in here, import it in with the use statement. So we're pulling in Ramsey U UUID slash UUID. Uh, now that we've got that imported in, we now need to uh, instruct the entity how to use that in conjunction with this protected ID field, right? We have the ID, but it's not, uh, not being defined what the ID actually is. So I'm going to alter this now. Uh, and, and the way the Doctrine ORM works is it pays very close attention to your doc blocks. So in the doc block, we're telling it that this var is a UUID type, right? And we're also telling it uh, that, the, that the column is type UUID, unique true. We're telling it the generated value on the, in, the, in the case of creating new records is it's going to be a custom. And then we're also telling it the custom generator and what that is, is and we're using the UUID generator from the, the library that we included in uh, toward the beginning of this video. So now it, now Doctrine will know how to, uh, how to define the ID as it's creating these new records. All right, so uh, now one of the things that I also need to do though is um, I have a getter here. So we have getters and setters. Uh, so let me go down. There's a getter for the ID column. And we notice that it's showing an error here. And the reason is, is because it's, it's saying to return an integer. I'm type hinting or, 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 or I'm specifying a return type here of integer. And of course that field is no longer integer. So we have to update that. And how we have to help to update that is we have to change, first of all, the return UUID here. And we also have to say the return type here is UUID. And now we're okay. Now we're, now whenever we get ID, it's going to be, it's, it's expecting to return a UUID type. All right. So now we're done with our entity. Our entity is properly set up so that it knows how to, how to handle the ID column. And it's going to do that by you know, specifying that it's a UUID type. Um, one additional thing we need to do is in our routing. Now you may recall in our routes, I'm going to open up the routes delegator here in our routes for our get request, we're expecting the regular expression to be an ID, right? We have ID and we're specifying, give me a number, right? Give me a number is what we're specifying here. Uh, however, now a number is not going to cut it anymore. We now have to have a much, much more broad uh, regular expression. So in order, to, in order to accommodate this, we now have to change the regular expression to not just expect an ID, but also expect you know, uh, the, the UUID, which is going to be a much longer number and, and, and even have some other characters in it. So this regular expression here is going to have to change to be this. So we're expecting groupings of numbers separated by dashes. Um, and, and this regular expression now is, is what it's going to expect for, for UUID. So we needed to do that for the get. We also need to change that for the, for the put, because if we're, if we're doing uh, an update, we also need to have the ID uh, changed there. And we also need to change that for our delete routes. Now, so far in the videos, we've not uh, created an update or a delete uh, handler yet. We're going to be doing those in, up, up, in upcoming uh, episodes. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and include the regular expression so that we can properly handle a UUID when we're getting ready to do those. So now I've updated that by adding the regular expression for all the get requests, the put and the delete requests. So now our routing has been updated. So now I think we're ready to test because now we've got the UUID uh, package. We've got the regular expression set up. We've got the configuration set up so Doctrine knows what it is. We've also got the entity set up so it knows how to add a, a UUID in the case of an ID column. So now let's go ahead and, and I'm going to reuse the scratch that I used in the previous video for a post. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
And the post has a body where we're just adding announcements, we're adding a sort, and we're adding a content uh, in our request. So now I'm gonna go ahead and execute that. And we can see that we did get a response code 200 okay. We can also see that we are seeing the record returned here. Let me bring open this up a little bit. We can see that we've got our ID, which is showing our UUID. It's not an integer, it is now a string. And we can see we have sort and we have the other information that created in the modified objects. And we also have links here and the links are properly displaying you know, the, uh, the UUID on the end of the URL instead of just being an integer. Now, if I open up my database panel and, and pull the announcements information, we can see I do in fact have a, uh, another record here and it has the UUID. Now, of course, our previously added, uh, added records are still using the ID as an integer. We would need to create some sort of migration script that would allow UUID to be applied to all those previous records as well. Uh, but that's beyond the scope of what I'm doing in this video. This video, I'm just showing how to include it. Uh, so now we do have the UUID being properly added. Uh, we can see it in the database. Everything's working, working well uh, as far as that goes. So, uh, so we have uh, added UUID into our application and it's properly being handled. Uh, now, of course, uh, in, in future videos, we'll be using that a little bit more uh, as we're doing the update and the delete record. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, a migration script will take care of previous records added in. So I hope you found this useful. That's how you add UUID into, in this case, a Zend Expressive application, but it could be any application using UUID. Um, you know, so that way you've got your ID columns being more unique than just an auto increment uh, ID field or integer field. So please, thank you for watching. Remember to like the video down on the bottom, subscribe so that you know that future episodes are coming, and I appreciate you being here. Thank you.